talking about. So I'll just search from 26th to 30th and do this. And this is what I got, by the way, super responsive. So it looks amazing. And when yep. you say search page, you're really referring to this page, right? Exactly. Yeah, got that's it. exactly what I'm referring to. Whoa, the gender just dropped 10 Canadian dollars. Thank, Thank you, you so much. That is That's awesome. Insane. And we just broke 700 viewers with a $10 donation, hey. guys. You're the best. Thank you so much. And smash that like button. Let's keep this rocking and rolling. Nice. Let's go, guys. So the first thing we're going to do is build a home.js component. So, because if you want to go ahead and create the first file, and then what we can do is I can create it after that. But Sure thing. In, uh, just to show them. So what do you, home.js? Exactly. Do, do, nice. doop, doop, doop. Nice. And once we have home.js, we're going to use our nice little trick called RFCE. And RFCE is a, is a really handy extension that we, it's called ES7 React Snippets. And to get that, it's very simple. You just go to VS Code Extensions, type in ES7 Snippets, and it will come up. And that will give you that RFCE functionality, which is nice. So at this point, what we're going to do is we are going to actually go ahead and give this a class name of home. So we're going to give this a class name of home, just like this. And we are going to go ahead and import the appropriate CSS file. So we're going to say import home.css, like this, right? And obviously, with that said, we're going to have to go ahead and create the CSS file. So I'm going to go ahead and create home.css. And we should be popped in right here. So uh, I think you have to follow me, Kazi. So let's go ahead and refollow me. There we go. So now you guys can see I'm inside of home.css and we've imported it at the top here. And that will allow us guys to do a few things. That will allow us to actually write CSS, which only belongs to the home folder, uh, home component, sorry. So with that, what we're going to do now is we're going to pull this onto. So let's just prove that this is the home. We're going to say H1. Um, oh, no, my snippets don't seem to work. That's fine. We can do H1. And here I'm going to say uh, home component like this right save this file and i'm going to go back to app and here we're actually going to pull in the home component so i'm going to say home like so and what we can do is we need to import the home component so i'm going to say import home from home like this right and save the file and what that will go ahead and do is it should now we should now see on the <laughs> we should now see on the uh on the right side so let's go ahead and give me one second my itunes is going nuts so just shutting out my <laughs> itunes and now you guys should be actually good to go oh and i just realized i got my phone as a thing so i'm gonna actually probably use that at some point but for now let's keep going nice so uh let's go ahead and pull up localhost on the right okay so we're gonna do that. So we got localhost and the actual final build right here. So everybody can see it. Nice. And are we sharing the screen? Yeah, nice. Awesome. So now we've got, uh, you can see it says home component, right? So what yes. I'm going to go ahead and do just to prove this. We're going to get rid of the H1 over here. And now you should be able to just see home component, right? So it should be super clean. We might need to refresh localhost uh, because it doesn't seem to be coming up. Somebody says, Sonny, check your voice is too low. So let me go ahead and turn the gain up a little bit for you guys. I'll turn you up right. a little. Don't turn your gain up. Your audio is pretty oh. awesome. I'll turn you up here more. Your audio today is awesome. like really clean. Okay, awesome. Now so, you're better. Nice. So now what we're going to do is we are actually going to go ahead and build out the home component. So the first thing we want to build inside the home component is... Um, the actually no before we do that so we actually added the home component but we actually want to always show so think of it this way the header component is actually going to live in both the home and the um the search page right so it's going to exist in both of these things so what we can do is we just built the home component but we're actually going to go ahead and build the header component and this is always going to show so let's go ahead and add this in right here right here so yeah. what we need to do is create header.js so header.js and we should snap into that file in a second. Uh, let's go in. It's just loading. So we're now inside of header.js. I'm going to do RFCE. And we're inside. And I'm going to do class name equals header, like so. And we're going to do import header.css. And then I'm going to go ahead and do header.css. So we've created a header.css file as well. And you should see me snap in any second. 
No, there we go. So we're inside. And inside of the header file, let's go ahead and start sort of drafting out what it's going to look like. So the header file has an image tag. So I've actually gone ahead and grabbed an image. And this is just an image of the, um, the uh, Airbnb logo. So let's go ahead and pop this in here. Um, and what we're going to do is you can see I've given it a class name of header underscore underscore icon. So this is BEM. This is header component and it's the icon element. So that's why we've done this. And now we should actually go ahead and see that if we, okay, so it's freaking out because we haven't imported it. So we need to go ahead and import it here. So we can say header like this, save the file. And we should now see a massive Airbnb logo, right? So obviously we don't want it to be that big. It looks a bit ugly when we, when we have it like that. So so how do we get that to look a bit smaller, right? So we go to header.css and we basically are going to target the header icon. So we're going to target the header icon and I'm going to say, give it an object fit contain. So this is going to keep the aspect ratio so it doesn't stretch. We're going to say the height is 100 pixels. So now you can see it's a very small size. And then we're going to go ahead and give it margin left of 80 pixels. So now it should push it a little bit from the side. So let's go ahead and decrease this a little bit for now. So let's just say 20 pixels to make it a little bit subtle. Uh, we have the image tag up and running. So that's all handy and that's done. Now we're going to create a div for the center stuff. So that, that search input field that you see and the header, right? So let's go ahead and pull out the deployed version, Kazi. So this is a deployed version? Yeah. So this is the deployed version. And you can see in the middle of that deployed version. So let's actually go and give it half and half. Uh, so because right now... It's a sure little thing. bit stretched. There we go. So you can see in the middle of the, the top bar, we have that search input field. So we're going to go ahead and build that first. And then we're going to add a header right section, which is which has those uh, icons that you see on the right. So Got the first it. thing we're so going to do So hold on. So in the, in the header, this is going to be one. So I'm just imagining this. This is one container that will just yep. keep the logo. And that one container yep. has only one child. Yeah. So this is really good, by the way, guys, because my um, CSS skills suck. So it's good because if you're a beginner in CSS, you'll pick it up this way too. I imagine this is one container with two children. One is the search input and one is the search icon. Exactly. Yeah. Nice. Okay. Dope. Perfect. And then we got another one here, and this has four, ch one container with four children. Text. Logo, exactly. icon, icon, icon. Yep, exactly. And the middle container, we're mm -hmm. going to apply flex one to it. So it's actually going to span all of that gap that you see in the middle. So this is going to apply flex one. And so hold on, let actually... me get this straight. So this container here is actually really like this, uh, right? Yes, exactly. Ah. <laughs> nice. Exactly that. And that happens when you do, when you do flex one. Exactly. So it's giving that the importance. And then the the ones on the right and left are only taking up as much space as they need. Exactly that. Now, yeah. another question for you, Sunny. How do they know to be centered? How does Airbnb logo know to be kind of centered? You know what I mean? Like, why isn't it left aligned? So what we do is we say that the um, header, so we say that entire container should be display flex, which uh -huh. will pop everything into a row. And then what we say is align item center, but, and that will right. align everything centrally. Ah, yeah. so this is because of align items uh, center, something like that. Yeah, exactly. Dope. Okay. Dude, this is actually a really cool way for me to learn. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, nice. Yeah. Okay. And when you do a line item center, it will center every single one of these items in the entire header. We're applying a line item center to the header. Yeah, so the actual, um, we're applying it to the direct children of the parent, so the, the header parent. So which it'll make sense when we do it, but what, it. what will happen is for that middle one, for example, that will have its own display flex, and then that will have to have its own align item center. Got it. So every single container has to behave. You have to give the rules to that container. So um, yeah, we'll, we'll be able to show it out. But that's a really good example of align item center. Yeah. Beautiful. Okay, okay. Let's keep going. Nice. So with that said, what we're going to do now is go over to here, and we're going to create a div. So I'm going to go ahead and do div. Um, so let's make a div. And this div, oh man, why is these snippets not working? I'm going to say div class name equals, and then here I'm going to do header center. 
right? So this will be header center, and it's being a bit laggy. So this is actually going to go ahead and do this. So header center, and here we're going to have two things. We're going to have an input type as text. So here it's going to have an input type as text and a search icon. Now it's going to freak out because this search icon, I mean, where are we getting this from, right? So in order to get the search icon, we're going to have to pull in material UI. So let's go ahead and actually do that at this point. So Kazi, let's head over to materialui.com and show them how to install material UI core and material UI icons. Yep. So you guys make sure when you're at material UI, grab this, come back to your command line. I'm going to just open up a new one and then install this time you install core. Now I'm going to go here, type in icons and um, in the mean, and then also I think install core really fast, damn. And then over yeah. here, choose icons, because my download is what, 900, 900 download speed actually right now, 900 megabits. Nice. Uh, so make sure you also install icons, you'll need this. On this page, make sure you click here, but it says search the full list of icons and yeah. until somebody finds a better way to do that. And then go in here, here are all your icons. So for example, when you guys are looking at these icons here, right? Um, whoops, there we go. So Sunny has this avatar icon at the top right. I, I can probably, did you actually pick it from here? Uh, no, so the, the avatar is actually a component because you can pass something, but let's look at the globe, uh, for example. Globe, so let's type okay, in globe. So let's type in globe. Okay, there we go. Yep. So that's coming from right there, dope. And then what about that drop, drop arrow? drop error that's that's actually if you type in uh i think it's if you type in down down or something I think, yeah there we go oh, no is it that one that is one expand downward? more it's expand yeah, more that's it. yeah mm -hmm. yeah right there and then yeah i mean everything else oh the search is i i mean obvious so then what sunny would do is once he finds search right here we got search we match it up to that one dope and now I click here, this will give you the actual code. You could copy it, paste it into your app, and you're good to go. Exactly. And then that's how, when you see me using snippets like search icon, language icon, expand more icon, that's where we're getting them from, right? So if you do get confused at any point, you can be sure to check out Material UI, that icon search tool. All right. I'm going to give nice. you access. I'm going to give you read and write access to both terminals as well. Awesome. Nice. So with that said, guys, this search icon is freaking out right now because it doesn't know where to pull it from. So let's go to the top of the file, import the search icon like that. And that will actually go ahead and uh, it should save the file. And we should have the search icon. So you can see now everything by default is display blocks, which means it stacks up on top of each other. We don't actually want that behavior, right? So in, in order to get rid of that, what we can do is we can go here and we can say header and we can say display flex. So if I do this display flex, check out what happens. As soon as we hit save, everything goes into a row. So you can now see that the Airbnb and the top has gone into a row. Let's go ahead and remove that home component. Let's just comment that out for now so it gets a bit confusing. There we go. So inside of the header now, we've got the search icon and we've got an input field text, uh, input field, yeah. So what we're gonna do now is also, remember we said you have to treat every single container with its own rules. So in order to do that, we can target the header center, say display flex, and look what happens when I do this, guys. So if I say display flex, align item center, like this, look how the uh, search icon is now central center with the input field. So that's really clean, and that's the way that you do that. All right. Now, what I'm going to also do is go ahead and add a, the right section. So the right section, I'm going to go ahead and do a div. And this div is going to have a class name of, let's go ahead and say header underscore right. There we go. And here I'm going to go ahead and add in a few things. It's going to have a p tag. So this p tag is going to say become a host because that's what they have on Airbnb. And for those of you who don't actually know what Airbnb is, it's a place where you can pretty much rent out a room. It's like a hotel sort of booking website. Um, so yeah, so that's, that's where you can become a host as well. So we're going to import the two icons at the top. So you've got language icon, expand more icon, and also. This is not an icon, but it's it's a component called avatar. Now that's how we achieve that sort of circular profile image. A very, very powerful component. You can actually pass it as source. We use it in a lot of other builds, so be sure to check that out. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and pop in those three icons here, like so. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this. 
And now we should see those things pop in. And now you can see in the header right container, you, as you guessed it, it's display block, which means they stack up on top of each other by default. We again don't want this behavior. So what we can do is we can say header right. We can go header right. And then what we can do is we can say uh, header right display flex. Display flex like this, right? Now, if I go ahead and do this, we can go ahead and save it and you should be able to see everything goes into a, into its own line. Right now, if again, let's stick with our rule, let's do a line item center and we will be able to see again that everything goes central, central with each other, which is really nice and it's a really good way of doing this. Now, for the header, what we're going to do is we're going to space out those components components as much as they can go. So we're going to say justify content space between and that will actually push the components apart as far as they can go from each other. And then for the central element, remember we said that we want that center one to take up as much room as it can. So we're going to go ahead and give that a flex one rule. And that will do that. And you can't actually see what this is doing unless we actually make it a little bit bigger. But you need to trust at this point. So because let's go ahead and make it a little bit bigger. Now you can see the input field is actually taking up the majority of that room, but it doesn't look like it right now, right? So it actually doesn't look like it. And the way we fix this right now is we're going to add a few things in. And um, in order to do that, uh, what we need to do at this point is firstly, we need to go ahead and do the following. So we're going to say align items cent uh, center, which we've done. So let's go ahead and do that first, align item center at the top. Uh, William Cruz, again, with the um, five, I think that's, uh, what was that one? He always says it every time. I can't remember. But thank you so much for that donation. donation. Massively appreciate Keith that. Keith donation. Dude. Awesome. Uh, I always actually, I call it the Chief Keith donation, but I forget <laughs> what, it, what the CHF, man, I, every Swiss time. Franks. Swiss, Fra how, the, how in the Swiss. world does CHF stand for Swiss Frank, bro? But yeah. thank you so much. <laughs> that is huge. I get, yeah, I always get lost to that one. I wish thank it had you, a dude. better acronym like SF, Swiss Frank. That would be so yeah. much easier. But thank you, brother. Appreciate it. Massively appreciate that. So nice. So now what we're going to do is let's go ahead and do the following. So for the uh, header, we're going to go ahead and add the following rules. So I'll explain each of these ones as we do it. So we're doing align item center. We're doing position sticky. And what we're doing here is if when we do position sticky with a top of zero, what this does is if you go to the deployed app, Kazi, and let's go ahead and scroll down on the deployed app. So let's open up the deployed app mm -hmm. and let's scroll down. Can you notice how the header is actually sticking to the top? Yeah, I can see right? it's very, uh, like boom. So it, yeah, so it does that because we've done position sticky and then top zero. So it sticks to the top and that's how we get it to look like that. Now, an important rule that we have to add is the Z index. So you have to say Z index of 100, uh, 100 because any if we gave something else like 99, we want it to be we want it to be like sort of on top of everything else. So it covers everything. We're going to give it a background color of white, which is what we see and expect, and a width of 100% because we want to span the entire width. So that's going to do that for us. The next thing we want to do is we've already styled the header icon, which is awesome. We want to basically. William Cruz says the best of the best. You both are amazing. Sunny would be nice to see you working with React Native. Challenge accepted, dude. We will get onto that and we will start building something in React Native. I haven't used it in a while, so I mean yeah. we can definitely. I'm excited to go back into it. I know people are asking what happened yesterday because I wasn't on the live stream. I was I shared like uh, my dog got hurt. So um, I'm going to share some of that with you guys. So this is actually our puppy. Her name is Pudgy. And she ended up like really breaking her nail pretty bad. So that's why yesterday we had to go to the ER. Frankie ended up taking over the stream. Uh, then we were waiting at the, um, at the vets for hours and here. That's my girlfriend. That's Amberly. That's Pudgy right there. Uh, she was pretty hurt. And then we pretty much got her back. And this is this is what she's up to now. So you can see she's passed out. She got a little like uh, cast on her arm right there. And oh, got shit. A, yeah, got <laughs> okay. a comb so she can't bite it off. But yeah, she's getting big really, really fast. Um, dude, it's horrible when you see a little one, like a little dog sort of injured. That's crazy. They gave her a little car. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a little like tiny cone. She's so she's, adorable. She's probably, 
she's probably playing with it as well. Like she's just sitting there, like <laughs> she's out of action with her yeah, cast. Yeah, crazy stuff was going on, man. And then yesterday, like our freaking whole alarm, like our sewage system, like making crazy sounds and stuff, and then releasing smell. I'm like, what is happening? Can we just get back to coding? <laughs> <laughs> God, damn it, man. At least we are back, guys. And I think that deserves a smash to the thumbs up button. <laughs> yeah, guys, if you, yeah. yeah, for the little puppy, you know, yeah. go ahead and smash that like button. Exactly. Thank you. People are saying blessing her. Ayush says blessing for her. Courtney says beautiful dog. She's a uh, English bulldog. She's four months old. So to see her and then like the nail got broken. So they had to like actually pull it out completely. So that's why they put the cast on top of it. Yeah. But uh, yeah, other than that, let's keep in rocking and rolling. Now I'm back and ready to go, guys. And we're here and let's crush it. Nice, let's do it. So hey. what we're going to add now for the center is we're going to say give it a max width and fix uh, and fit the content. So let's go ahead and do this. So fit content like that. And what we're going to do is boom. And here I'm going to give it a bit of styling. And so we'll say panning of 10 pixels, a height of 30 pixels so let's go ahead and do that save the file and you can now see that it should change a little bit uh, oh oops i've added that to the wrong thing we should add it over here there we go add it to the header center and that will actually go ahead and pad that out a little bit now for the top right so the center element we're going to go ahead and give it a border radius of 999 which is a perfect oval we're going to give it a one pixel solid light gray border and you can see now it's got a, a sort of very subtle light light sort of um light gray border around the top but we don't want that input field to actually have the border around itself so what we need to do is target it like this we say header center the direct charge which is an input and we're going to say border none so we're going to go ahead and do border none and what i'm going to do at this point is i'm going to say width of 250 pixels like this and now guys you can see if we go ahead and do this so actually at this point we'll keep it responsive let's go ahead and, and model get rid of this for a second but what we can actually say is we can say, um, um, let's leave it as width 250 for now. Uh, let's go ahead and do that. And then on the header right, what we're going to do is we're going to say justify content space between those icons. We want to give some space between them. Uh, we're also going to give it a width of 15 view width and a margin right of 80 pixels. So I'm going to go ahead and do that right now. And this will go ahead and it should space it out a little bit more. And there we go. So. Let's go ahead and do this for now. Kazi, let's actually make it a big screen. Uh, sure thing. Boom, there we go. Nice. Now you guys can see everything is spaced out evenly. We've got a nice little bit of spacing. And what you can do at this point for desktop support, you can do a width of 250 pixels and you see the middle goes into that. But for now, to keep it super responsive, I'm going to actually comment that out. So let's go ahead and do half half again. Nice. And what we're going to do now is for that input field, what I want to actually say is give it a padding of 10 pixels and an outline width of zero. And what this does, guys, is now, Kazi, if you go ahead and click the input field, damn, Ifosa just dropped five pounds. He says, damn, you guys are just awesome. Enough said. Hope you make a web app with an admin interface someday. I've actually heard a lot of people say that, so we will go ahead and actually make some kind of admin CRUD functionality app or something. By the way, I figured out finally how to actually increase the size of this thing. That was thanks to Leif. I was on the coaching call for a Profitable Shortcut. And he was like, dude, you can increase the size of this. And I'm like, oh, oh, nice. Damn. That makes life so much easier. So, yeah, thank you, Ifosa. Really appreciate it. And yeah, awesome. this is another reason I actually really like Django as a web framework because it comes in with a badass built in admin interface, which is so nice. freaking nice, too. But I think awesome. a Django and React combo could be really fun. That would be awesome, dude. Because I want to learn a lot of Django. That would be awesome to do that. Nice. So, Kazi, go ahead and click the input field. Yep. And now, can you see there's no blue outline? Right? You don't oh, get nice. any blue outline. But if I if I actually uh, comment out the outline width... Uh, oh, no. Oops. I'm on the wrong code editor. If I go and comment out the outline width, this one, mm -hmm. and we now do... Can you see you get that nasty blue <laughs> outline? Right? Yeah, kind I see. Kind of defeats the entire UI. So, what you need to do is outline width of zero. 
and yep. that actually gets rid of it. And now right? it just and looks clean. You... Yeah, and that's how you get that sort of desired look, and, right? And it's a Boolean type of thing, right? So whether you have zero and one, it's the same. Even if you had a hundred, it'll be the same. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Dope. Yeah. So that we're going to switch to zero and then you'll be able to get that. So that's really clean. And with that said, the header is pretty much done at this point, right? So the header at this point is done, uh, which is awesome. So now we can actually go back to the uh, app.js file and we can see that we've got our header over here. And now we're going to focus on the home component, right? So let's go back into home. And previously we had this where we said home components. So let's go ahead and see. Now you can see the home component renders in underneath um underneath the the header and i can see some people have just completed the google clone that's awesome oh uh, nice I I yeah i love seeing people that oh damn luis eduardo just dropped 20 us dollars wait hold Thank on you. hold on whoa 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 whoa, 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 whoa. That's damn that's dude. What I'm talking about, dude thank you so much luis eduardo really appreciate it holy crap you guys I mean, yesterday I had to pay $400 for my dog. So this is actually helping out, you know? This is actually helping out. <laughs> Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. That's wow. insane. Thank you so much, Louis. Wow. Somebody right. said we have 20 dislikes on the video. So I think he paid $20 to make up for all those dislikes. <laughs> nice. <laughs> appreciate it. Appreciate that, dude. So... With that said, let's go to the home.js component, right? So what we're going to be building next is a fun component is the banner, right? So that really beautiful banner that we see. So to get that banner up and running, let's go ahead and create banner.js. So I've just created that file and we should pop into it in just a second. Da, 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 da. And we are in that file now. And if I do RFCE and the snippets should load, there we go. And we can see banner and then just do our little setup. So we say class name equals banner. And at the top of the file, I'm going to go ahead and import. Oops, import banner.css. There we go. Save the file. And it's going to complain because it doesn't have a banner.css. So let's go ahead and create that file. Oh, we just got another donation, dude. By X and I'm gonna I'm gonna bring that in a second, but Jose said, Kazi, I just wanted to say that your content is the best out there. Actually spending the time to read and see your STS stats result uh, see your results as speechless. Thank you, clever programmer. Of course, guys, we're reading every That's single awesome. message and we're trying to respond to every single uh, message as long as you guys are actually putting in the time and asking good questions we will reply to most of people and thank you so much x lilu for the six pound donation holy crap euro six euro, euro six euro yeah. donation and he goes um, awesome hi kazi and sunny in the future do you have any responsive mobile project or tutorial on how to use media media queries in react what are you thinking sunny Dude, we just got another one. I'll let that pop in when you see that. But yeah, we are going to be doing a responsive. Oh uh, my god! We'll definitely be doing. We'll definitely be doing uh, some builds with media queries. So stay tuned for that. And Do you guys know? You guys know that song on TikTok? I should be playing that here. Remind me actually to put that on after this, Frankie. But like the, that one goes, "What you do with the uh, the uh?" <laughs> you have you heard that on TikTok ever? Yeah, you guys heard that? <laughs> I want to play that when we get these at the donation. Oh. What you do with the uh, uh. I, think, I, think, I think we should snippet that out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thank oh, you, that. Sayyid. That is a 10 pound donation. And he says, waiting to see a Facebook clone. And we will be making a Facebook clone with every option, including live and marketplace tech. One, React with TypeScript. Sunny, TypeScript is coming up. I know you're going to enjoy it. We Two, Redux. Three, Apollo. Four, GraphQL. And five, Docker. Damn, bro. I think you might be asking a lot for $10, <laughs> bro. I think you're pushing it now. <laughs> but we'll try. We'll try to add some of the things in there. <laughs> but thank uh, you bro no pressure no pressure guys <laughs> so <laughs> with that said we've got <laughs> we got <laughs> holy shit they're gonna start asking for blood from me <laughs> <laughs> yeah 
bro just so for now <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> oh man for banner so inside of the banner component now it says banner is not defined and that's because inside of here we need to do an import so let's go ahead and say import import oh god's sake i've got a new keyboard import banner from banner.css boom 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 there we go <laughs> save that somebody else message they're like could you make an app that includes react graphql scikit learn and tensorflow <laughs> like damn <laughs> holy shit um, so it's freaking out if we if you give it an empty thing right it's going to start freaking out so this would just say hello for now something like that and then it will actually go ahead and not give you an error so it should be working completely fine once we put that in and it saves and refreshes um let's go ahead and refresh localhost 3000 Kazi. all right i will go ahead and refresh localhost 3000 oh oops i've done it wrong this should be banner here should be, sorry, import from banner. That's why that was happening. Inside of here, we do import from banner CSS. That's nice. So there we go. We've got hello. I'm, let's just say I am banner. Okay. I am the banner. Now what we're going to do is, I love how people actually spot that out as well. Like it, show, it shows how much you guys are watching. It's insane to see that. Yeah, uh, seriously. Yeah, like when I see people like you've forgotten an import, I'm like, holy crap, they're really like nailing in on that. So yeah. now inside of banner.js, we're going to have a few things, right? We've got the search. So we're going to ignore the search just for now. But for the info, right? So the actual <laughs> banner itself, let's get that looking the way that you, that the majority of it that you see. <laughs> what? I found it. I found it. So I'm just going to show it real quick. Uh, I was trying to spend some time looking for it. Uh, and I found the song in the compilation. Uh, this is what it is. <laughs> Let me play it actually real quick. <laughs> Hopefully it doesn't blow your ears, guys. Be, pre be prepared. Oh, I can't see it. I can't hear it. I mean, damn it. <laughs> uh, it's, I don't know how this trend started, but it's all about like splashing water on people. And Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've seen, and, I've seen a few people doing it. Yeah, but I love that song. <laughs> that I love. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> yeah, so you guys can look that up. It's called "What You Doing with That." Yeah, I'll, I'll definitely clip it and have it in our videos playing next time. Nice. Sean Dawn says, "Great, what you guys do. I made the Netflix <laughs> and Google." watching your video, watching your video. Yeah. thank you <laughs> that's, yeah, that's pretty sick name sean dawn oh nice. damn yeah sean dean maybe yeah oh damn it david jonathan said that wasn't sound <laughs> mm. <laughs> wait are you serious are you guys... yeah i might have not actually you came through on the sound i think the sound was there but it might have been too quiet let me let me try it one more time <laughs> <laughs> I think it should be good, guys. Someone, someone jumps in like, is this the place where we learn React? <laughs> <laughs> Did somebody say that? No, I'm just, I'm just imagining. Oh, yeah. yeah. No, no, the audio is there. I mean, uh, audio should be there, you guys. All right, all right, let's keep coding. My bad. <laughs> but yeah, that's where the song nice. comes from. So now what we're going to do is we have the banner and we want to basically get this to a point. So let's go ahead and put the banner over here. So we've got banner.css and just going to target the banner. And what I'm going to say here is that the banner should have a height of 50 view height. So this is going to be pretty much say it's got 50% of the screen is going to be its height, right? So we're going to say that we want it to be positioned relative because we're going to have some things positioned inside of it and we want to do some funky stuff with that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the background to an image, right? So the background of this, I'm going to set it to an image. And this background that I'm going to set it to is actually an image of like a sort of Airbnb looking building, right? So let's go ahead and do this. I'm going to save it. And now you can actually see if we go ahead and actually make that a bit bigger, Kazi. So let's go ahead and make that a bit bigger. We should be able to see why is it looking like oh yeah oops so we've got that right now you can see the image is there but it's not centered right so all we need to do is add these two lines at the end saying center center and this will center it horizontally vertically and you can see boom there you go you get like a very nice centered image 
Yeah, so that's really cool. It looks super clean. Let's go ahead and do half half again. Nice. And what we're going to do now is where it says I am a banner, you notice how it's the background of the div that we actually set. Right, so I'm going to actually go here and change this now. So we actually have inside of it, I'm going to have not I am a banner, but I'm going to create a div. So I'm going to say div. And this div is going to have a class name. So I'm going to say class name. And this is going to be banner info. Right, So it's going to be banner info. And this is going to be responsible for the text that you see. So that black block of text that you guys saw in the previous uh, build. So what we're going to have inside of it is a H1, which says get out and stretch your imagination. The reason why we don't, I didn't think of that, that was what was on the website. That's what's actually on the Airbnb website. And then we're going to have a H5. Um, I think you're muted, Kazi. Yep, Hello? now you're good. No, I know, but I wasn't talking. Oh, oh sorry. <laughs> I, I, thought, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I thought I saw you talking to the camera. Nice. <laughs> no, no, no. I was just I was just staring everybody down in the live stream, making sure they, were, uh, they knew I was paying attention and watching them. <laughs> All right. So now you can see, let's go ahead and refresh localhost because for some reason it does this when we pair program. Um, let's go ahead and refresh, Kazi, localhost 3000. And then what we're going to do is we are going to have, so now you can see it says, get out and stretch your imagination. Here's Here's some that. good comments, by the way. I just want to shout them out. Mawaniki says, after trying tons of boot camps, I found my Yoda. You guys are the best. And Robert nice. says, thanks, your streams and videos are great. Keep going, guys. Learned a lot from you. Nice. And you know what, guys? Even if you're a beginner, just follow along with the builds. And I say this even to the students inside the course. Follow along with these builds. It's pattern recognition. Just by following along with the build every single time, you'll start to pick this stuff up naturally. Like if you go along with every single build, it's impossible not to learn. Right? So yeah. go ahead and make sure you do that. And you guys will naturally pick up this, these skills. Nice. So with that said, let's actually go ahead and add an explore nearby button, right? So let's go ahead and add that button in. So let's go ahead and do it here. So say button and it's a capital B because we're using the material UI button. So I'm going to need to go ahead and import that at the top of the file. Let's go ahead and pop that in at the top. And then here I'm going to say explore, explore nearby. Oops, explore nearby like this and then i'm going to go ahead and give this a variant so i'm going to say this is a variant of outlined so material ui allows you to pass props to its components this one changes the look and feel of that button so the explore button you can't actually see it very well but you can actually see it now and Mehban's in the chat hey <laughs> she goes sorry fashion be late the girlfriend's always supporting nice so now we've got explore nearby um and now what we're going to do is actually go ahead and style this banner info so it looks um, a lot nicer than what we're seeing right now, right? So let's go ahead and do banner underscore underscore info. And let's do this. So banner underscore underscore info, oops, info. And let's actually go ahead and change the background color of this to black. So let's change the background color to black. And let's do this. So we're going to say color of white as well so change the color because now we it, remember we've just set the background color to black uh, to black so the text is also going to be hidden so we need to make the color white and you can see now we can see the, the color of that stuff right so um now what we're going to do is da, 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 that's for oh. <laughs> Confused. Uh, now, so let's go ahead and do color white. And what we're going to do is we're going to add some padding, right? So um, these are different values that we're going to be using. I'll run you guys through what each one is. So padding top, I'm saying give it 25% padding top. I want padding left 50 pixels, padding right 50 pixels, padding bottom 40 pixels. Um, and then I'm going to say the width should be 300 pixels max, right? So the width of 300 pixels. And that will actually tie it in a little bit. And now what's really nice about this design, guys, is that if you actually go ahead and make this uh, bigger, Kazi, we should be able to see that this will actually is a very nice sort of overlay, right? So let's go ahead and make it bigger. Can you see it? Like it kind of looks pretty neat how, it, how it's in there, right? Um, so you can kind of get that thing and then like... Yeah, it looks uh, super neat. By the way, Ramraj says, please consider adding tracked module in the PWJ course. What's tracked? Maybe he misspelled React. I don't know. 
Um, yeah, I think you might be talking about React inside the PWJ course. We actually do have a bunch of content. We have a loads of coaching calls on inside the course, and we're actually dropping some modules on React. So yeah. everything is going to be inside that course, yeah. And apparently Ashish uh, enjoyed Maribon and Sunny's dance video on Savage Love on TikTok. Hey, nice. <laughs> Quick getting that clout. <laughs> Damn, yeah. There we go. All right. <laughs> Somebody says, do you teach hacking? <laughs> oh, yeah. man, if, you, if you consider debugging hacking, let's go. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right, so... Now what we're going to do is we're going to change the style of that button, right? So let's go ahead and target the buttons. So we're going to say banner info, the direct child, which is a button. And I'm going to go ahead and do background color. And I went and actually saved you guys some time. And I found the color of um, Airbnb, which is this right here. So if we do that, you can see the button pops in, right? Now, I, you can see by default material UI give, makes everything uppercase for some weird reason. So to get rid of that, you do text transform inherit. And I'll get rid of that uppercase. Whoa, just got another donation by Manav Aurora. Uh, I think I've seen him in, in a few of these videos. Awesome. He says, PWA or React Native, what will be great for a project? Depends on what you're doing, dude. So PWA is Progressive Web App. I'd yeah. recommend go with that until you need a native app. And I love yeah. what Ramraj is saying. He goes, I'm loving the PWJ course already. Way to go. Thanks for the awesome content. And... I actually want to share something pretty epic that happened in uh, in PWJ yesterday, actually. So I'm going to show that. Also, I know, dude, I know, I know, I know. I will, I yeah. will, I, I will address that in just one second. I'm going to lose my shit, actually. So I'm actually <laughs> trying to hide that from myself for just one second so I can show this because we have a bunch of awesome things to show you guys. Uh, where did he post it? Where did Devin post it? I'm trying to find. Uh, let me actually try this. Uh, okay, let's oh, try. Oh yeah, let's All right, that. here we go. Here we go. Awesome. So I just found it right now. I'm gonna full screen this, and hopefully you guys should be able to see this. So Devin is our student in Profit with JavaScript, and he goes. I'm not normally used to posting stuff about myself. Uh, this is Devin, by the way. He was coming on the live streams as well. He goes, but I know it's important to share wins. So I'm sharing mine while I have them. First of all, I love my new job. It's my first six-figure job and I'm learning. So first of all, damn, Devin. Congrats on your first six-figure job. And he goes, and I'm learning a lot of different things that I don't ever get to practice when I work for smaller companies. I've only been working this job for a little over a week, but it's awesome. Second, I just got accepted to the second round of interviews with Google. Yes, That's that Google. Insane. And he goes, I am so pumped. Uh, I, when I first joined the group, I was working for a mom and pop agency doing WordPress sites, making like one third of what I'm making now. And I only joined PWJ back in June slash July. Is there a correlation? I'll let you decide. I want to thank everyone in the channel for their support because I'm mostly here for the community and it's helped me in a large way. Dude, that is so freaking awesome. That is insane, dude. And look, Google Frank is here too. Stage. Nice. That's awesome, guys. If you want to know how to get inside this community, link in the description. And David is here. There. David is also on the live chat with us right now. Yeah, David's always watching. Solid guy. He was actually in the coaching call yesterday. Yeah. We spoke loads and we'll be working quite closely together. So David's an awesome dude inside the course. Yeah. And what the hell? The greatest ever. You should be in the course right now. You're the only one yeah. left who is our biggest supporter but not joining the course. You should jump in. So, 100%. Dude, that is sick. This is for you, Devin. I just played the air horn. And that is a massive, nice. massive win to be in the second round of training. And also, Kara Robinson is in her round of interviews with Google as well, and she's in PWJ. I'm actually coaching her, dude. Uh, for oh, those snap. Yeah. Yeah, Damn. Yeah, so I'm actually giving her a bit of hand with those interviews. Yeah, so she's doing a Google interview as well, and she reached out to me to get some help on that. So, yeah, that's another student inside the course who's doing Google interviews. So this is like mind-blowing stuff, guys. Like seriously, it's insane that the jobs these people are getting. Like Frank even got a six-figure contract. Blew my mind. Like for a company, and if, if if you guys have heard of Sonos, then that's the company that he got it for. So amazing stuff. 
Yeah, we're just having massive wins left and right. So if you guys are serious about taking your career to the next level, guys, I'm telling you this, jump on this course before we increase the price. And just for fairness, so all of you know, we know that this program is worth over $2,000 because most people send us messages telling us how much this wor this program is worth more than the boot camps that they paid for. And in about in next week, we're gonna be doing a challenge for React and during that challenge, we're going to be increasing the price of the course, and then it's permanently increasing. It's going to keep going up. Yep. So, if you find it for less than two thousand, and you're serious about this, you should one thousand percent join. So, for all of you who are here, just letting you know, because I think this would be a good deal for you guys before the price actually goes up in a week or less. Exactly. And guys, if you're on the fence and you can't make the decision yet or, or like you're just you're tempted or whatever, make sure you check out in the in the description. We actually are offering a completely free training on the three top mistakes that developers make completely free training. Go yep. ahead and check that out. And, and yeah. Yep. So you guys have the links in the description. You guys can go to this page anytime you want and make sure you just check out this video over here for profit with JavaScript. This is the page cleverprogrammer.com slash PWJ. And it will tell you everything about this program. But you guys know you're gonna be getting Sunny on the program on the live coaching calls. You know you're gonna be getting Nas. So it's a brilliant program, guys, with so much just heart and soul. We put this together. Join it, your mind will be blown. That's all I can say. Yeah. And guys, like I can't stress enough, like if you think that you, if you enjoy the live streams, me, Kazi, Nas, the entire team, Frankie, we put our heart into this, this, into this program. So like everything that we love and we aspire to like to, to, to make an impact in this sort of, uh, in, in this community is inside that program. So everything. like if you want to be a part of that, then just jump in. Yeah. hundred percent. Awesome. Dope. Let's keep rocking so, and rolling. Nice. With that said, guys, we were on the banner, right? So we just added in the text transform inherit line of code, which actually changes the button text to lowercase because we don't want it to be super everything like screaming at you. And right now it's touching the top text. So I'm going to do is margin top of 20 pixels font weight of 600. And you'll see that pushes the button slightly away from the um, top of the text, which is awesome. So we want to make sure that that's done. Also the H5 tag. So the one which says plan a different kind of getaway to uncover the hidden gems near you. Going to go ahead and target that and give it a margin top of five pixels. Um, Kazi, we need to actually set up Prettier because for some reason Prettier doesn't do it when we save, um, which is a bit annoying. But it will not work, bro. I think live yeah. share causes these problems. Yeah, it's fine. We can we can carry on without. That's fine. Yeah. So we've got the H5, and what we want to do, guys, is when we hover over that button. Right, so right now when we hover over that button, it's not very responsive, right? So um, it's going to actually change to a different color. So Kazi, if we actually go ahead and hover over the explore nearby button. Um, yeah, so guys, that P that Slack group, Bara just asked, do we need to be a member uh, of Profit with JavaScript to join the Slack group? Yes, you have to be because uh, that the way we keep the quality just incredible in that group is by whoever joins Profit JavaScript gets access to our community as well. And I think community is actually one of the best parts of that program. So what did you want me to do, yeah. Sonny? Uh, if you just hover over the explore, <laughs> I saw Ooh. some people in the, comment, in the comments saying, who's the guy in the back? <laughs> Frankie. Frankie. Just like Frankie's oh, big, uh, videos. oh yeah, yeah, guys, that's Frankie over here. Uh, he's getting some sick shots, actually. So let me show you guys actually the photo that he just took. And uh, look at the setup here. I mean, that looks amazing. This is my setup right now to do this live stream. This is all we have to do to actually make the make it come true. Nice, dude. Awesome. Were you sharing your photo? Oh, nice. Yeah, I see it. Oh, awesome. Yeah. Nice. Dope. So yeah, that's Frankie, guys. Uh, so it, notice when Kazi hovered over the explore nearby button, it went black, right? We don't actually want it to go black because it doesn't look very clean. What we want to do instead is target it so that when we hover over it, so when we add this hover attribute, it's going to change the background color to white and then the text to. So it's basically going to oh, invert. The one colors. second. I forgot. I'm sorry. I keep doing this, but I don't want to miss this. 
So I forgot about this comment. Somebody in the chat reminded me. Thank you about that. But Lewis donated $5. Thank you so much. And he goes, my donation of $20 was for your little dog. Damn. Thank you. That's Thank you so insane, much. Dude. He goes, this Love one that. is for you guys. Great job. Let's go. Thank you, Lewis. Thank you, Lewis. That's amazing, dude. Nice. So with that said, so if you hover over the explore nearby, you'll see the colors should invert now. Yeah. Nice. Oh, nice. That looks yeah. clean. Like a crisp little look to that. Uh, and what we're going to do now is actually go ahead and have, so we've done that sort of very nice sort of look and feel to that part. What we're going to do is have an actual search button at the top. So a search button, which has search dates, right? So at this point to add that search button, I'm going to go ahead, add a, another div on, on top of this. And this one we're going to call, so I'm going to say div like here. And I'm going to give it a class name. So I'm going to say class name, Last name of banner, and this is going to be banner underscore underscore search like this. And here I'm going to basically add in a button. So I'm going to say a button will exist here. And this button will essentially say at this point, we're going to say just search dates, right? So something like this button search dates. And what I want to do is I'm going to give it a variant of outline. So I'm going to go ahead and do this. Uh, oops, I forgot that we don't have pre. So I'm going to go ahead and do variant of outlined. Oops, variant of outline like this. Awesome. And then what I'm going to do is give it a class name as well. So I'm going to go ahead and say class name of banner underscore underscore search button. So we can start this later on. So banner search button. And with that said, it should we should have a button on top. And you can see it's actually there. It's a little bit difficult to see, but it's actually sitting there at the top. And it says search dates at the top. So that's very clean. Now we're going to go ahead and style that. So Whenever we give a material UI class uh, a class, we actually need to style it with the important properties. So I'm going to go ahead and add the following styles to that button. I'm going to say a background color of white. I'm going to say the font weight should be 900. And it should have a text transform. So to get rid of the uppercase uh, text, and we're going to give it a, the text itself a color of the Airbnb pink. So that's how we get that look and feel. And then what I'm going to say is for the banner search, so the actual div surrounding it, I'm going to say, go ahead and do the following. So I'm going to say, give it a top of zero, so it should be attached to the top. Give it a display flex. So actually, let's go ahead and get rid of this one. We can do display flex, and then we're going to say flex direction column, and this will actually span the entire width of the screen, so display column. And now you should see it takes up the top of the column. So you see at the top now we have that search dates. And I'm going to get rid of the home component text over there because that's just ugly right now. So boom, there we go. You've got the search dates at the top, right? So that looks clean. Uh, but what we want to do now is have it so that when you click search dates, we essentially change it so it says search dates and then hide, search dates and hide. And I have to, to demonstrate this, go to the deployed version, Kazi. Uh, let's go. And if you click on search dates, so you see it says hide at the top and then it says search dates. Every time you click the button, it changes the state, right? Right, so we want to get that functionality, and then basically we and then we'll nice use that. little like and then nice little animation when I click it at the top. Yeah, so that's actually already in there at the moment. So if you go ahead and go to our one, so Ooh. the local host. So that's the reason why we get that is because it, we're using the material UI button. Nice. Okay. Yeah. So that's why we get that one right there. So awesome. So. Now what we're going to do is we are going to go to the um, search dates. And what we've got to do to get this functionality is actually add in a piece of state. So the piece of state that we're going to add in, so state is essentially just how you write a variable inside of React. Uh, here we're going to have a piece of state which is called show search. Right? And the reason why we're going to do this is because we want this, we want this variable to keep track of if we click that button or not. And by default, initially when we click it, we're going to have false. And the reason why we want to do this is because we're going to say, if you click it, so let's just say, for example, um, whenever it says show search, or if so, show search is true, then I basically want to render out the search element that you guys saw earlier. So let's just say show search, uh, so show date picker. Let's show, show date picker. So that's what we're trying to do here. 
Um, exactly. Now, if we go ahead and save, so it says use state is not defined. We need to import that. So we need to import that as such at the top of the file. There we go, save it. And then we should be able to see now if we save that. So Kazi, now if we actually change this to true, you should be able to see that it should say show date picker. Awesome. And if I change this to false, it goes ahead and it hides that. All right, so now we have some kind of functionality to it, right? So what we need to do is that button, we're going to tie the functionality to that button. So I'm going to say on click of that button, whenever you click that button, I'm going to shoot off an arrow function. So it's going to shoot off a function. And this is going to say set show search to whatever the opposite of show search currently is. So if it's currently true, it's going to become false. If it's currently false, it's going to become true. So now to show this in practice, Kazi, go ahead and hit the search date button or search, yeah, search dates. And now you can see show date picker. There we go. So you see we have some kind of functionality to it now, right? And now that is going to, that basically sets us up for the next part. This, the next part is essentially building that beautiful date picker that you guys see in the final build, which is that really nice. All right. Visual. I'll add that. I'll add that to the top. So currently we're working on building the date picker. Yeah. We're building the date picker at the moment. Okay. I just added nice. that to the top. Awesome. So. Now what we're going to do is let's go ahead and go to um, let's go ahead and actually go to we need to basically we're going to replace this show date picker with some kind of component which looks like this. So we're going to have a search component, right? And this search component should render out to be essentially what we see in the final product. So let's go ahead and create search.js. So we should snap into that file any second now. I've just created a search.js file and boom we are in it and if we do rfce we should get our es7 snippet and let's go ahead and do our normal bem naming conventions we say search let's go ahead and create the appropriate css file so we're going to import from search.css save that create the search.css file nice um by the way we just broke 1000 likes so yep. thank oh, you guys nice, so much for that. That is huge. And Maribon says that if Sonny could, he would shower with the AirPods. <laughs> Chris yeah. Cavern yeah, just I dropped. Chris, thanks so much for the $5 donation. Really, hey. really appreciate you. Damn. And he goes, finishing up the Hulu shadow clone you did yesterday, but wanted to show some love. Hey. That's awesome, dude. Glad you're doing that. Because, uh, yeah, the Hulu clone was... The Hulu clone was one of the funnest builds. I didn't think it would be that fun. but It was freaking if you guys awesome, haven't, dude. Yeah, if you guys haven't, that's something which, like, just looks so nice on your portfolio, like the Hulu clone. Um, it might already be deployed, actually, so you might have it. Um, um, is it clone? Let me go ahead and see if I've got it. So I've got the actual link here. I can drop it to you. And let's go ahead and do it. I'll drop it in the code, Kazi. So go ahead and check out that. Okay, boom. All right, got it. So this is the one you guys built yesterday. Damn, it just yeah. looks so freaking slick. Like, look at that. Wow. It's insane. Yeah. And it's completely uh, connected to an API. So if you go to the top and you actually go ahead and click. Because I was wondering, I'm like, how much accurate dummy text and data did you guys add? Like, holy crap. Oh, wow. Yeah. So if I actually change horror romance, it changes. Yo, this yeah. build is actually sick. Kind of regret that I wasn't like here for this build. This one was pretty fun. Yeah. Like, look at how juicy it all looks like. Oh. Even for the, uh, even the animations, like me and Frankie were saying, adding those animations changes it from a website to an app. Yeah, right? so when, true, true, true. Yeah. That's true. So this is, the kind, this is the kind of app that you guys would see on like a Fire Stick TV app or something, you know? Like, this is the kind of thing that you would be used to seeing as opposed to just a website. Like, so you could probably build this, deploy it on some kind of Fire Stick app. And yeah, that'd be awesome. Uh, nice. Somebody asked, Luke says, why don't you guys work at Google? Guys, we're not the guys who work at Google. 
we get the guys who work at Google at Google. <laughs> <laughs> We're those oh, guys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Literally those guys. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Hopefully in the next one or two years, like the probability of somebody asking, like, how'd you get a job at Google? Like, and somebody were like saying clever programmer would be like massive. We're like, Hey, it was clever yeah. programmer. Exactly. Nice. So with that said, let's go ahead and build the search functionality. So let's go back to search and here, this is where this is going to be an intricate part of it. Wait, right? Hold on. So, so are we building search or date picker? Yeah. Uh, so uh, we were building the date picker, but this is, is part, basically the date picker is the search component. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> okay, all right. I mean, I, I don't understand. How does that work? There... So this, this is the date picker component, yeah. <laughs> right. So are we work, Are we not working on the date picker component then? Okay, okay, all right. I'll just let you keep going. We are, right? we are, we are. We are. The all search right, component... Just... I'm going to add this in here, like date picker component. There we go. <laughs> All right. Nice. All right. So um, now we've got the, <laughs> I think Mehban loves your chair. <laughs> Is this new chair, by the way? I swear, I've seen, I've seen, I think I've seen this in the previous ones. Oh, oh yeah. Thank you guys, by the way. This is a brand new chair I just got, actually. It has a nice little pillow here for me to sleep on. <laughs> Look at that. That's the you know as a proper a stream streamer yeah 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 and then it has like this back support thing which is hard to show right now but it's right here this thing right there nice so it has yeah because what was happening with the other chair was i couldn't like i couldn't actually sit with my back on it so that was the problem <laughs> i'm laughing because meanwhile frankie's got like a normal chair <laughs> and no more chair. <laughs> yeah, Frankie's chair. <laughs> no, Frankie has a pretty cool chair, right? This is a ma mesh chair. <laughs> he has like a wooden chair. <laughs> Look at his setup. <laughs> his setup is like a spaceship. <laughs> Yeah, you know. Hey man, when you live stream, you know, you got you need all this. <laughs> I just walk around like this now. I don't even let my neck go from here. <laughs> oh man. I try to keep my neck glued. All right. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Here we go. Let's go. Back on. back to the date picker. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> inside the date picker we need to do a few things right so the thing that actually allows all that date picker magic to happen is um the react date range so i'm trying to kill the laughter <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, so we need to do npm i or oh, wait can i do it yeah npm i so let's open up the terminal kazi Whoops. Rafi, there we go. Rafi code says, Sonny, is that your AMG? That is my AMG. Thank you, dude. Uh, hey, that guy's to... name is, but his name is mine. What the hell is going on here? I'm Rafi. Oh, yeah. Nice. Um, <laughs> Frank goes, Frankie has, he, Frank goes, Frankie has the junior dev chair because he has a senior dev chair. <laughs> hey. nice. Yeah. Dude, uh, let's go to the second terminal. Hmm. Okay, so second terminal right here. Type in here, yep. npm i, I see you. Yep, so npm i and then react date range. So this one right here. And it doesn't yep. matter if you're in that folder or in the actual app folder, right? Yeah, it doesn't matter which one. Well, CD yep. anyways, bro, because we're going to forget when we're about to deploy. Oh, damn, wait, no, hold up. Did I do it? Oh, okay, good shot, dude. Good shot. Yeah. Yeah, make sure you're in the right one because otherwise that, that will be an issue. Yeah, bro, uh, you can it's just being tab super it, slow. Okay. It's being super slow in right, my right. one right now. I yep. was like, damn, what's going on? So CD. Mm. <laughs> Send with your NPM. I make sure you're in the right folder, guys, because that will. I don't know. My my terminal's being so slow. But <laughs> Who retracted that message? Damn, dude. Why are they? <laughs> That's funny, dude. <laughs> what was that? Somebody's message just got retracted. They're like, 
I don't know what he said, but he's like, am I the only one who thinks Sonny is looking fat today? I don't know why people think that you're more oh, jacked than no. everybody here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Dude, the one who's actually fat. I got to work on my my belly, you know? Got to work on it. I'm trying to box every day. Hey. I'm like oh, a few I'm actually months starting right MMA now. again. Hey, let's go, bro. Yeah, I'm doing Krav Maga, which is like an Israeli style of MMA. Damn. Yeah. Damn. Yeah, it'd be dope, man. Yeah. Yeah. So, I'll show you so some jujitsu. You can show me some Krav Maga. Let's do it, dude. I'm down. <laughs> I, I want to learn jujitsu as well. That'll be sick. Yeah. So now, guys, we're going to import the date range picker. So this is like a very handy NPM module uh, that I found. Um, and we've got, we're going to import it. And now you also need to import two other files. So these are CSS files that the guys who made this uh, module recommend that you, you bring in. And this is because basically this is, this is going to give you all that styling that you guys saw in the final one. That's how the date picker looks, the way it looks. Uh, <laughs> Shuri Ashama said try capoeira that'd be, that'd be fun <laughs> that's fun and Ashish says MMA tutorials coming soon yeah <laughs> just to see us doing react one day jiu jitsu the next and boxing the, the day after that and that's it mm -hmm. nice so we've we imported the date range picker and to use it there's a few things we need to do now right so we need to add two pieces of state and to add those pieces of state is very simple. One is going to be for the start date and one is going to be for the end date. So here we just done that. So we've added in the start date, end date. Let's go ahead and do, yeah, that's it, nice. And for the start date, we're going to give it a, we're just using today's date as the initial value. And for the end date, we're doing today's date as well. Now, once we've done that, we need to actually add in the following object. So here we basically say const selection range. Now this stuff, you don't really need to know why we need to do it this way. The main thing is, is <laughs> somebody, said, <laughs> somebody said, Sonny can't stop laughing at Frankie's chair. <laughs> it does make me laugh, honestly. Is it? Yeah, Frankie's. <laughs> Frankie, show us your chair again. Oh shit. <laughs> it's because- Oh it's shit, because... what happened here? Yo, who's manning the fucking live chat? <laughs> Damn, guys. It's because you're you're like this. You're like super stern on your chat, you know? Oh. <laughs> bro, I'm not leaving this thing, bro. I'm just glued to this thing because I've learned my lesson. My neck starts breaking after doing the live streams. So... Yeah, it does. It does. Right. <laughs> Never <mind. laughs> We need to add this selection range, and this is something that they want you to do if you're using this. So you need to do selection range, start date, end date, and then the key, which is just selection. I'm not sure what the key is for in this situation, but you need to have it. So add that in. And then we're gonna create a function, and this function is basically responsible for, this function is responsible for when you basically select a date. So here we're saying, whenever you select a date, set the start date to whatever range you selected the start date, and then set the end date to whatever range you selected the end date. Now this is all done um, by the library itself. So we just need to have this function in here and then they handle everything else. Um, <clears throat> so Manava Roa says, are you going to launch any React Native course? And he just dropped a donation. Thank you for that. Thank you. Um, yeah, not a React Native course at this point, but React we're covering. So uh, yeah, so we'll actually be dropping some content on React Native very soon. Nice. So we have the search here, and now what we're going to do is we are actually going to go ahead and add in the following line of code. Now this is the date range picker itself. So date range picker ranges, we basically pass an array with selection range. So this one here, and that's an object. And then on change, we pass in our handle select function. Okay, so this is stuff that I would recommend you guys just follow. You literally just follow it along. You do it as I've written it and everything will just work for you as well inside your project. So, Kazi, let's go ahead and open up our local host. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to import the search. So import, import search from search here. There we go. And now what we should be able to see is it says use state is undefined. Okay, so use state is not defined. We need to go ahead and do this. Nice, save it. 
And now it also says, I can't read that. It says, cannot resolve something. What does it say? Cannot resolve. Um, let me go ahead and pop this in. Cause you, oh, yeah, I've got it. So localhost 3000. Nice. But, but, but it says, cannot resolve date FNS. Oh, yes. Okay, so this actually requires something called FNS. So you need to do NPM I. So let's go ahead and pull it up. NPM I date FNS. So it's a peer dependency. To be honest, they should have set the, the, the modules up to actually do this for you. But you need to do this step, guys, because you need that. Um, otherwise, you're going to run into this issue. So that's their bad, but it should be fine. So now once that installs, that should fix this er uh, issue for us. Um, okay, there we go. So now if we actually see, it should be loading up for us in a second. So nice. So now if we click search dates, awesome. Kazi, go ahead and click search dates. Hey. Nice. nice. It's opening that thing up, bro. Let me awesome. refresh and let's click it again. Boom. Look at that. Got yesterday, this week. Damn, bro, that they build all of that out of the box. I was like, I don't know why, but I was thinking, man, I'm like, Sonny must have done a lot of math here to make this stuff work. <laughs> like, damn, bro. I should have just made up some <laughs> some excuse and be like, yeah, dude. You know what? To be honest, I have built one of these manually at a previous job. And guys, it's, it's actually a headache to build that. So using a package like this is actually really, really handy. And this one is actually looks beautiful. It looks it, it looks really nice. It's a really, really good library to use because there's a lot of edge cases that you have to account for when you're doing this. Guys, stop repeating okay. questions in the chat. We are going to block you. So now what we're going to do is let's go ahead and add in. Um, let's go ahead and add in the following. So I need to actually, I want to check something actually. I wonder if we removed this from underneath here and changed it over here. And then we tried it. So let's go ahead and save. I just want to try something quickly. So now if we go ahead and try and click the search dates, Okay, that's pretty clean, but it's not as nice as we want. All right, anyway, so going back to the point, so let's go ahead and we've added in this the this date picker functionality. So we need to style it to look the way that we want it to look, All right? Um, <clears throat> so in order to get it to look like that, we need to do a bunch of styling to this thing. Um, and in order to do that, let's go ahead and do the following. So inside of search, this target search, let's do the following. So we're gonna say position absolute, uh, top 35 pixels, left 25%, width of 100, view it. So, um, Kazi, if you go ahead and click on the search dates. Yo, thanks, Adam. <clears throat> Whoa, what happened to my voice there? Yo, thanks, Adam, <laughs> for the 79 cent uh, nice. pound. Is it pa euro? 79 pence. Euro? What is that's, this? That's, that's, that's pence. Like pounds. It's a bit... It says like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, are you serious? It's like pennies. Yeah, 79 pennies. 79 pence. <laughs> With a P. Yeah. yeah. It's like, it's like, you know, pounds and pence and dollars and cents. Oh, shit, bro. I did not know this. Thank yeah. you for the 79 pence. Really appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you, dude. So here we're gonna do. So click on search dates. All right, boom, clicked. Yep. And now, as we style it, you should, you'll be able to see everything sort of move around as we need it. So click, leave that open. I'll leave uh, what that we're open. gonna do? Do you now, want me to make it half the screen? Yeah, let's do half and half. Nice. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add in. Boom. I'm gonna add in this, and we're gonna make it. So now it's saying top 35 pixels from the top left 25 pixels and then width 100 view it let's do half and half Kazi, for this bit all right i will somebody is like yo if you guys are making so much money why do these little donations impress you guys that's the humility that actually got us here today exactly yeah 
and that would never change, guys. Like, even if somebody sent us one, like, literally, no, like, one even if you hit the thumbs up button, yeah, hitting the thumbs yeah. up button, we're so grateful for. Like, it, it literally doesn't. Like, I remember in the beginning we started up and it was like a four dollar donation, and it was like, it blew our mind. So, yeah. Yeah, dude, is that what Mike Pence is? He's a one. Yeah. One uh, pound, one one cent, one pound cent. <laughs> uh, no, it's yeah. just a bad joke. But okay, got it. Nice. So uh, now what we're going to do I was talking is... about this guy, Mike, Mike Pence, but I'll just remove it. <laughs> All right. All right. So now we're going to do the, we're going to target the H2, uh, which is, so right now we don't actually have a H2 element. So I'm going to go back to our search and I'm going to add in a H2, which is basically going to be the number of guests. So we're going to have that number of guests pop in underneath. And then we're going to have number of guests and also we're going to have an input field for the number of guests. So here we're going to have an input field for like how many guests you want to have. And then we're also going to have a button which says search Airbnb. All right. So I'm going to add a button. So here I'm going to say, bah, bah, bah. I'm going to say button and I need to do an import for that. And here I'm going to say search Airbnb. So let's go ahead and do that search Airbnb. Let's go ahead and import that at the top. So boom, like that, save the file. And then it says people icon is not defined because the people icon is an icon that we need to import from Material UI. So go ahead and save that. Hey, Adam Tate just dropped another donation of two pounds. He says, thanks for taking your evenings up to do this. Dude, you're welcome. Like it's insane the amount of value that we see you guys. Like, yeah, that's Damn. insane. Love that, dude. Thank you, bro. This guy's working his way up from pence to multiple pence. Yo, <laughs> thank you. Really nice. appreciate it. I think the first one was just a feeler, you know? Yeah. Just See, a little tester. Through. Damn. Yeah. All right. Thank you, bro. Nice. <clears throat> so now what we're going to do is we have the dates popping up. Um, so again, if you could just click on the search dates button, Kazi. Reason why we have to click it is because yeah, it refreshes at times. So now you can see it says search uh, at the bottom. Oh, Salmon Fazal uh, Fazel has dropped five Canadian dollars. Nice. So we'll be coming back to code this later at my own pace. Just passing by to say thank you. Hold on, let me pop that in. Let me pop that in. Okay, now I'll cover it. So he says we'll be coming back to code this later on at my own pace. Just passing by to say thank you from everyone. By the way, we'll be coding React Native anytime soon. Yeah. of course dude we will be definitely coding react native soon so stay tuned for that and again massive thank you for donating that's it that, we really appreciate that thank you bro awesome so let's go ahead and do um the h2 yeah so now for the h2 what i'm going to do is i'm going to do just i'm going to copy a bunch of styles in here and I'll explain through what they're doing. So as soon as I hit save on this, you actually see the style looked a bit different there, right? And the reason why that happened is because I done display flex align item center, which means that the um, we now have that icon, so that people icon pushed to the right. So um, we now have the people. So uh, Kazi, you might need to move our face on, the, uh, on, on Ecamm. So let's move our face to maybe the center. You got it. Because right now it's covering the number of guests. Um, so, so that should be, you should got, you guys should be able to see now. On the drop down, it says the number of guests, and then it actually has that people icon. And then we got that with justify content space between and display flex. So now they're spaced apart. And we gave it a width of 559, padding of 10 pixels, background color of white, position absolute, left of zero, and top of 380 pixels. And the parent, well, we actually gave it um, position relative, so that's why it stays in its place. So the next thing is I'm just going to go ahead and style the input. So the input field is this one here. So this one over here. And this one, I'm going to go ahead and do this. So I'm going to say a width of 539, padding of 20 pixels, position absolute, left zero, height 30 pixels, top 420, and border of none. So you guys can just go ahead and actually just use these styles and copy us and it will work for you. Um, and that actually drops it down to the next line. And that's actually a very nice um, 
uh, number sort of that you can now select and it will show you. Uh, and the final thing that we're going to do, or not the final thing, but I basically now when you click the number of guests, so Kazi, click on the, the number two and you'll see that uh, you'll see that nasty outline. So uh, not not that one, where it says number of guests. Mm. No, it's a, yeah. so, so you get that nasty outline. So to get rid of that, we add in this. We say when we focus, make the outline width zero. So you can see it's gone now. Ooh, that is, but now I can't. Hold on. Yeah, it's definitely gone. Yeah, it's true, it's gone. But the date picker kind of blends into the page a little bit, so I can't see where it's ending. But yeah, definitely, it looks uh, much better. Yeah, so right now that's fine because we will be adding a button which you'll be able to see in a sec. Mm -hmm. yeah, so for the button to style, we, we need to do the following. We're going to say, go ahead and target that button and do the following. So position absolute, left of zero, but top, 480 text transform inherit and that's because we don't want it to be uppercase background color of the airbnb color and then color white and width of 579 and that will give you the exact perfect dimensions that you guys are going to need and it should do what we want um, so there you go you've got it looking pretty good but when you hover over so if cause if you hover over search airbnb right now you'll see it kind of goes transparent which is nasty like so the the search airbnb yeah you Ooh. see that it kind of we don't want that. We want it yeah. to basically invert the colors. Right. So to do so to do that, we add this in. We say when we hover, whenever we hover over it, we want to basically do a background color of white and a color text to be that. So now, if you do it and you hover over that, you actually see it. So if you click uh, hover over search <laughs> Airbnb, click it. Nice. Nah, now it looks clean. Yep. You want me to click it? Uh, not yet, not yet. No. Got it, got it. Because I, I will Th click it. <laughs> Danny Finkelstein says, "Keep up the awesome work, guys. I will watch this oh, thoroughly tonight." Oh snap! Let me five dollars. Damn! You. Thank you, bro, for that five dollar donation. And said, "Whoa!" I'm gonna nice, Danny. I'm gonna thoroughly gonna tonight. Hey, let's go! <laughs> Dude. Emotional code coming in with the heavy hidden $20 donation. Thank you so much. And all he said was that That's was his it. message to us. Thank you so Whenever much. Whenever I that. see like a $20 donation or something, I just picture somebody coming in swinging <laughs> ever since yeah. Frank. <laughs> you know Seriously. I mean? Yeah, this yeah. is just epic. Thank you for that. Nice. We are at $111 in super chat. Thank you so much. We just broke $100. And uh, you guys are awesome. That's insane. Thank you Damn. so much, guys. Let's keep this going. Hey! Woo! All right. So now what we're going to do is we are going to have it. So now we actually have that date picker component looking beautiful. It looks really nice. But when we click search dates, we want to change the text. And we want to change that text so that it actually says hide. Right. So how do we do that? We go back to banner. And here, where we had the search dates, what we can do here is we can actually go ahead and change this now so that it says the following. We can actually say, we can do this. We can get rid of this, right? And inside of here, what we can do is we can say, if show search is true, then show oh, hold the up. tech. Otherwise, Sunny, one show... second. So Sunny. Yeah. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. How do we, is there a way we can hide the sidebar completely? The, Which one? The status. I think it's the, is it the activity bar or the status bar? Uh, you're talking about that blue stuff at the bottom. On the left hand side. I think that's the status the, on the left hand side. The one that with the file and the icons. Because the code is getting way too wrapped. Like it's getting wrapped up way too much. Um, what we can do, I you think. You know what I mean? It, like it's looking too goofy now. Yeah, I think we can do. <laughs> like what, what is this? Show sidebar. I mean, so I can make it smaller, on. but I think then it becomes really hard to read unless everybody's okay with reading that. I, I think make... that's okay. I think that's, that's okay. okay yeah, I think that would be pretty good. Okay, if you guys are okay with that text, just let me know. Otherwise, I can change it back. Yeah. And thank nice. you so much, Devon, for the five euro, euro donation. Thank you so much, brother. Really appreciate it. Awesome. That's nice. 
Yeah. Thank you, dude. So now what we're going to do is we have the search dates uh, added on. And if you click on uh, the search dates, Kazi, so in localhost 3000, you'll notice it says hide. So it says search dates and then it says hide. Yeah, so that's awesome. Yeah. So we have this Ooh, full functional UI. Nice. Yeah. Look at and that, if you make bro. it bigger, there you go. It centers perfectly. So that you get a nice like little look to it. Awesome. Mm-hmm. So now what we're going to do is we are going to make it so that we are actually going to... No, actually at this point, I think what we need to do is add in the cards, right? So the cards are what we see underneath those like those really nice looking cards. Um, and what we need to do is we go to home and essentially what we're going to do inside of home... Another is, epic oh, donation nice. by Path Re SFL four dollar donation thank you so much my man really appreciate you and guys if like Paffrey, you've also been enjoying this video so far what can they do sonny they can smash the thumbs up button guys make sure it's blue so it's done and yeah we appreciate that it'll get the video out to as many people as it possibly can and it will help more people out there so go ahead and smash that thumbs up button do it guys thank you awesome so with that said, guys, now what we're going to do is we are, oh, damn, dude, the donations are flying today. Damn. Siring Cowden. Let me, let me find it one. first. Let me find it and first. Oh, wow. Saring always comes in hot. Saring Cowden just dropped one. And what does he say, Sonny? He says, sharing is caring. Thanks, guys, for sharing your knowledge. You guys are helping everyone a lot. Keep it coming. Please have this project pushed to get. All right. Okay, we'll do it. Thank you so much. Nice. Thank you, dude. Um, so now what we're going to do is we have inside of our home uh, file, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a, um, a sort of we're going to restructure this a little bit. So it says we're going to have a div and this div is going to be called like a section, right? So it's going to be called, so we're going to get a class name and this is going to be called uh, home underscore section. And what we're going to consider a section is going to be like a row of three cards, for example. So inside of here, we're going to have three of those cards. So Kazi, let's go ahead and open up the actual app. So the actual deployed version. Okay. And we right should here. be able to see inside the, inside the deployed version, you can see we've got three cards in a row. And then if we go down below, we've got another three cards. And this is fully responsive, so they grow, right? So you can consider a section to be three cards, right? So we're going to have two sections. Um, and then basically, we're going to make it fully responsive. So in this bit here, we're going to have a card component, which takes a bunch of props. And it's basically going to be three. So one, and then we're going to have another up. section. So hold up, hold up. So one section is going to be three yep all right got it nice so these three and then another section these three damn okay. <laughs> dude holy crap whoa this what is ha happening we just got two more donations one by what is bam can anybody i mean all i know is horace is a badass motherfucker for giving us 195 that's the BAM it stands for. And Frank just sent $20 donation. He goes, sending some heat. Love the work you guys are doing. Awesome Airbnb build. Thank you, Frank. Always appreciate you, brother. And God damn, we're at, we just broke 154 in the super oh, chat. Oh, this is insane. Thank you so much, Frank. Thank you so much, Harry. This is insane. Holy crap. Nice. Thank you. Now, damn, dude. So now what we're going to do is... <laughs> the, greatest, the greatest ever goes, Frank, I knew you were coming. <laughs> <laughs> it's about that time. We should have like suspenseful exactly. music start queuing up like later in the stream. Kind of know. Yeah. Frank is coming. Exactly. Yeah. Right. So inside of home, what we're going to do is I'm going to add in a snippet of code. So it says home section. And for those sections, so those cards that you saw, they're going to be inside of a row. So it's going to be display flex. And we're going to give it a padding of 30 pixels, right? So each one is going to have a padding of 30 pixels. Another great donation from Shubham Pandey. Thank you so much. Um, we've got a home section over here. So the card, we actually need to create a card component. So let's go ahead and do card.js over here. I'm going to create a card.js. And it, we should be inside of it. Stop now. you for a second, bro. And here we go. Gotham goes, I recently completed your Reels clone. Hey, 
Uh, and he goes, and believe me, I got an internship in a local agency. Thank you so much. Damn. I think, yeah, the rose cone as well. Interesting. That's nice, dude. That's insane. Love that. All right. That's awesome. All right. So now what we're going to do is we have the card component. So I'm going to do RFCE like this. And then I'm going to create a class name. So class name, I'm going to do here card. And we're going to go ahead and do, oops, we're going to go ahead and do import card.css like this. Oh, no, what did that happen there? Card.css, there we go. Save the file. And then inside of our card, so the card is an interesting one. It's going to take a few props. So props in a functional component appear here. So props basically are properties that we can pass the components, which make them look different, but we can reuse them. So this one, we're going to destructure at this point, and we're going to say it takes a source, it takes a title, it takes a description, it takes a price, right? And these are the different properties that we're going to be using um, for when we reuse the uh, card component, which is awesome. So now inside of the card, what we're going to have is we're going to have an image tag. So the image tag is going to basically take whatever prop, whatever um, source we pass in, and that's going to be the source. And then I'm going to create a div. Sunny, so you... we are we're done with the date picker, right? Yeah, we're sorry, we're done with the date picker. Now we're building the card components. All right, Airbnb card components. Here we go. Nice. Awesome. I changed it and I'm going to drop this uh, sound at the top. All right. And the greatest ever says, I just started applying today. Oh, dude, that is nice. So let me share that real quick. He goes, I just started applying today. And when I get employed, I will know for sure that it was because of these amazing lives and the amazing value shared. We'll be sharing that story in PWJ chat soon. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go, dude. That's amazing. The greatest yeah. ever has been on these live chat. Uh, on, on Consistent. These live every single time. Yeah. yeah. We know it's you guys. Yeah. I know Hajera. I've seen her very often on these live streams. Um, Alexandros joins on these live streams quite a bit. So thank you guys. We really do appreciate you. Yeah, exactly. Manav, I think I've seen a few times. There's definitely a few people here, which we notice and we see you guys every time. So that's awesome. Now, we had the so we're saying uh, card is not defined, right? That's because what we need to do is actually go ahead and import the card. So let's go ahead and change this and let's do card like that. Now, it will actually should fix that issue that we're having. And inside over here, what we can do is it says cannot resolve card.css. So I need to go ahead and create card.css. And we should pop into that right now. Uh, in a second. There we go, card.css. And now we should get rid of that error. So it's all part of getting rid of these errors, guys. Uh, so for the card, we have an image, right? Then we have a card info. So Kazi, let's go ahead and pop open the deployed version, and I'll give you a visual breakdown of what we're actually doing right now. So the oh. card info section is actually, so you, you see we've got the image at the top, uh -huh. and then underneath it we've got something like, I'm just making a div called card info, and now that contains the title, the description, and the price in some cases. So if you go to the bottom. So hold up, hold the, up. What's the card? In so card info is this here? Yep. All right, so that's going to be this title, that description. And then if you scroll down for the bottom cards, they also have a price. Uh, okay, got it. So boom, there we go. Yeah, and the way that we do that is I just popped it in here. So we basically render out those things if they exist as a prop. Nice. Okay, dope. Yeah, and then inside of home, so I'm actually saved you guys a bunch of time. So I've actually gone ahead and pre-populated some of this stuff with some props. So I'm going to go ahead and swap these out with some properties um, that I basically went ahead and found. Um, it's going to be, do some annoying stuff right now, but let's go ahead and format this. But what you guys can actually do at this point is go ahead and um, <clears throat> you can pause the video and you can pretty much grab these, what I've written for these different uh components, the props that we're using. But if I go ahead and save that now, and let's go to our local host. Yeah. So 
So let's go right here. Nice. Hey, Soham just came in clutch. Thank no, you, Soham. Bye. And he goes, awesome, guys. I have started to learn JavaScript inspired by your clone videos. Great content. Keep up the great work. Thank That's you so awesome. much, Soham. Really appreciate it. And now we are over $160. Thanks to you guys. Yeah. Always love and massive massive appreciation for all of you guys and if you guys are enjoying this and you want this to go out to other people make sure you smash that like button so it just keeps going out guys exactly massively appreciate if you guys do that nice so we're going to go ahead and style some of these card components so let's go to our card and for card the css what we're going to do is for the Top one, we're gonna say, we're gonna target the card, and I'm gonna say give it a margin of 10 pixels. David Rakosi is in the chat now. Oh damn, dude, what's up? He's a crazy student inside of PWJ. Awesome student, and it's good to see you, dude. Yo, nice. David, let's go. David has a few builds for you guys already built. We're either gonna be delivering it live or dropping it as a video this week, hopefully. So really excited about that. And Pawel Nowak oh. came in hot uh, and just dropped uh, 10, po 10, Poland. sure current... 10 yeah. Polands. And he goes, you are the best. <laughs> Greetings from Poland. Thank you so much. Nice. Oh, I... scripting like hero just said, I watch your tutorials and I got a job in my city. Thank you. Damn. Damn. Wow, that is beautiful. Guys, we're trying to get to 10, uh, 5,000 developers, uh, 5,000 people getting jobs as developers. That's our number one goal this year in 2020. So that is amazing. We should have like a counter going seriously like at the top and it should always be increasing every time we find out you guys either get a client or a job. But this yeah. one is going to be one of them. That would be awesome. We should definitely do that. Or on the PWJ website or something, have like a live counter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That'd be cool. So right now you can see that image is huge, right? So I don't want it to the, be the that one at big. the bottom, this one here. Yeah, and there's actually a few they're in a row right now, but you just can't see it. So ah, what I'm gonna clean. do is I'm gonna I'm gonna say card image and I'm gonna go ahead and style this. So let's go back to half and half and then we do this. We say card image and i'm going to say oh nice object what the hell fit. it works <clears throat> whatever you did just works <laughs> so object fit fill and that should do that for us now and what i'm going to then do is go ahead and do um i'm now going to go ahead and do so 300 pixels min width min height of 200 pixels and yep 100 and then i'm going to go ahead and say for the card component itself we're going to say that it should have the following properties. So let's go ahead and add this in. So I'm going to go ahead and add in a margin of 10 pixels, a border of zero pixels and a solid black. So this is very important because this actually gives it, it gives it zero. So we don't actually need that one. We can give a border radius of 10 pixels. And you see, you get the rounded corners, right? The overflow is hidden so that if I don't have overflow hidden here, guys, you'll see, even if I round the corners, you see what it did. Like it just gets, it doesn't do it as we want it. You want to make sure overflow is hidden. Then you're going to do box shadow. Now this box shadow gives it that 3D effect. We're doing a transition, a transform, and this will actually come in because we're going to add a hover property here. So let's go ahead and add this in. And now what you can see is if, Kazi, if you go ahead and hover over those cards. Mm -hmm. I'll do that right now. Ooh, nice. They got the little feel to it. Yeah. But I think and they're now, doing the it. Yeah, go ahead. The reason why we did uh, we get the sort of animation with it is because we added in transition transform 100 milliseconds, which yep. says that 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 animation should actually take 100 milliseconds. If I get rid of that, let's go ahead and check out what it does. So you can see it's very Ooh, snappy, ugly. Yeah, you don't want that. You want that silky buttery smooth transition. Ooh, silky buttery smooth, dude. Mm. Like that almost like releases some taste in my mouth when you say those words. 
You, you know, you're not the first one who said that. Somebody else actually said that in a coaching call. They were like, "I what what really made me get inside of PWJ is when you said that the buttery smooth animations." And I was like, "Oh shit!" Oh. <laughs> you might you just right. start saying that just like random times, like all the times. Exactly. Let me actually, um, also, and and zero point one is gonna also do the same thing too, right? Zero point one seconds. That should be a hundred milliseconds. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Okay. Dope. So let's leave it like this. Nice. Right. Now what we're going to do is we have those things. Uh, and the good thing is, guys, is that here it's doing it very clever. So let's go ahead and make this, uh, make it big, big now, Kazi. Notice By how way, it's going to use up. This is really awesome. Uh, the greatest ever said something really nice. And he goes, Saring Calden, he's, he was talking to Saring and he goes, yeah, these guys may not even realize just how valuable they truly are and just how much more value they're sharing as opposed to what they think they're doing for us so yeah like i love we, that right like we're we're putting in the effort for you guys we're making this as valuable as possible but for the right people and it goes both ways right because we can give you value but also how much value do you pull and extract out of it so we love having people like the greatest ever in our community who are like really feeling like they're getting their money's worth and a ton of value out of it so exactly exactly that guys because you go ahead and make the <laughs> airbnb so the local host a little bit bigger and notice how it grows now um yeah let me go ahead oh this one right here yeah oh so nice the actual... dude but if you grab the actual edge of the screen and just start pulling it you'll notice that like you get a really nice sort of uh, so look at that Ooh. Ooh, look at that that is nice yeah it looks really slick yeah dude i love that that is excellent yeah so you get that sort of responsiveness frank now. says Kazi so... making the buttery smooth thing weird now <laughs> uh... nice so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna... <laughs> that's funny all right keep going <laughs> we're gonna basically for the card info <laughs> we're gonna go ahead and do the following so you can say margin top minus nine that'll pull the margin up for the uh info on the text uh and then we're gonna say border radius of 10 pixels padding 20 padding top 20 and margin uh a border 10 a border yeah. of one all right so let's go ahead and add those things and then the C. and now Ooh. what i'm going to do is i'm going to i'm going to style the text inside all right so i'm going to style the text so we've got a h2 and a h4 inside um, so inside of card.js, we've got a H2 and a H4, the title and the description. So I'm making the font size uh, 18 pixels, font weight of 600, and the H4 font size of 14, font weight of 300, margin top of 8, margin bottom of 8 as well. So let's go ahead and save that. And now you can see you get a much nicer look and feel to it. So that looks really clean. Um, <clears throat> now, with that said, let me go ahead and just check something. So... Let's go ahead and cause it. You zoomed in it by any chance on your on your local host? Are you zoomed in? Zoomed into what, bro? What are you talking about? Uh, as in, have you got a zoom on right now? So go ahead and press like command. Uh, so zoom into that screen. So press command. So you, okay, yes, that's perfect. Nice. Nice. Yeah, I was a little zoomed in. I think. Yeah, I was a little zoomed in, but uh, it seems like that is a we just today. We actually right now we got somebody to join profit with JavaScript. Arnold oh. Tomboy. Yep. Nice, dude. And he also and he joined profit joined... with Python. That's awesome, dude. Is he watching right now? I don't know, but if you are watching, drop it in the comments. I don't remember reading Arnold in the comments. I've been looking at the comments pretty consistently. I don't recall. So he might not yeah. be on here, but yeah, now he's that's famous. Awesome, hey. nice. So now we can see that we've got the first row up and running. So this is very simple now. Uh, if we go to our home.js, we can see the second one. We've got the outlines for them. So guys, let's go ahead and scroll down on localhost. Yep, I'm going to scroll down right On, here. Yep. So, so now you can see we've got the outlines there, so I need to give in the props, right? So let's go ahead and pass in the props. So again, I've gone ahead and done this hard work for us. 
props. So you can go ahead and go here and just paste these props. So these are another set of props that we have right here. And I'm going to go ahead and just align this in a bit more. And you can see here we've got it aligned. Here's another source and here's another one. Boom. And if we go ahead and save this file now, we should be able to see the rest of the... So I'm going to go ahead and just zoom up and down a little bit, uh, uh, scroll up and down so you guys can see this. But now, because let's scroll down and you can see that we've got those two tiles, like those two rows of cards, right? So we've got two rows of cards and the bottom one says 130 and I, it's got even got the prices on the bottom one. Uh, really clean. Yeah. Really Super clean. clean. Yeah. Nice. So now we've got that done. What we need to do is go ahead and add the footer in. So for the footer, what we need to do is inside of app.js. So not, yeah, inside of app.js. Let's go back to app.js. So here, here we have, so you can see it's very, very nice layout. So we've got the header, we've got the home page, and then we're going to add pretty much a footer. Right, we're going to add a footer. So this will actually satisfy the last bit here. So the footer. And let's go ahead and create that footer.js. So footer oh, I was wondering. Okay, it's picking up my phone sound. Oh, okay, I muted it because I was uh, repl messaging the student who joined, and people are like, holy crap, your phone sounds are jacked. <laughs> okay, got it. Nice. So now for the footer.js, uh, I'm going to do RFCE here, and then I'm going to do class name. So class name footer. Like that, and then here I'm going to do import CSS. So import the footer. Wait, so footer.css. Footer.css. Save it. Let's go ahead and create the footer.css file. So footer.css like this, and we should pop into that file any second now. Nice. So once we have the footer, guys, what we're going to do essentially is we're just going to jump in here, and we're just going. This is going to be very simple, guys. We're going to have two p tags, right? We're going to have two p tags. One is going to say that little sort of no rights reserved. This is a demo at the bottom of the page. One is going to say privacy terms, sitemap, company details. That's what you see at the bottom of the um, the Airbnb app at a very simple level. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this into our component here by saying footer. That should get rid of the error that we're facing. Save that and it should go ahead and drop to the bottom of the screen now. So let's go ahead and scroll down, Kazi. Yep, I'm gonna go ahead and scroll down on our app or the code. Yep. Uh, on the on the app. And you can see at the bottom we've got the footer pop in. So are right. we now working on the footer? Yeah. So we Damn need to, bro, yeah, you gotta tell me we're done with stuff. All right, here comes the horn sound, we're done with the cards. <laughs> The footer, will, the footer will actually take pretty quick. So we've only got one thing to add to the footer, but let's right. go ahead. And, so for the footer, we're going to add the following styling. I just so added a I'm foot add emoji on the title. <laughs> nice. So here, what we're going to do is we've got the footer. So here we're going to say border top, one pixel solid, light gray. Padding of 20 pixels, background color of white. Uh, it's like a gray, off gray. Bottom zero, so it's going to stick to the bottom. Uh, and then we're going to say text align center. Uh, here we don't actually need bottom zero, text align center. And then for the, uh, we're going to target the P tags. So that text, we're going to say padding of five pixels, font size of 14. So now if we scroll down, Kazi, we should see the, the bottom. So that footer should actually show us. Ooh, and there we go. That looks okay. Hold on. It's not showing up for the people watching. So I'm going to do this. And now it should show up. There we go. Showing up now. There. Is it showing? Now it's perfect. Yep. Nice. Now it's showing perfectly. Mm -hmm. Nice. So now you guys can see the footer. Uh, we just got another uh, euro. We got a one euro donation from Aita Pajabi. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you, bro. Appreciate that. That is amazing. We're at 163 now. Nice. That's crazy, dude. Damn. Wow. All right. So we've got that up and running, which is awesome. Um, and then what we're going to do is, <laughs> guys, if you if you write a message and you do it all in caps, capitals, it's going to, the night bot, which is like a, it's going to like block you. So, so don't, try not to write in all caps. Yeah, sorry other, about that. Yeah. It's the bot is really aggressive, so we can't even control him. He has a mind of his own. <laughs> 
All right. Now what we're going to do, guys, is we've pretty much done the homepage. The homepage is done. Like It looks very slick. The thing is working. Um, now we want to move over to the search page. All right. So how do we get the search page functionally? How do we do routing or any of that stuff?